May Allah be pleased with our mother Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala anha. You know, for us, we get such a glimpse into the life of the Prophet Sallallahu through her hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of narrations and her willingness to share the arguments, to share the jokes, to share all moments from the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's not just something we would crave. Even the Sahaba wanted to hear from Aisha. They wanted to sit with her and hear from her what the Prophet was like at home. And the next generation, the Tabi'een, they wanted to come to her and sit with her and ask her, what was he like Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And so when we're interacting with these narrations, think of yourself sitting with Aisha radiallahu anha, even though you know him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and asking her, you know, what was he really like Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with you when he was at home? So you couldn't get enough from her radiallahu ta'ala anha. And on one hand, you wanted to know how human he was sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And on the other hand, you only had reinforced to you how superhuman he was sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What I mean by that is that when Aisha radiallahu anha was asked, you know, what was he like? And when they were asking her that, it was, you know, implying, you know, did he, did he used to take a break in any way? I mean, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam surely would come home and he would be exhausted, right? And Aisha radiallahu anha says, actually, he was a human being like all other human beings. When he would come home, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he would remove the lice from his own clothing. He would milk his own goats. He would do work himself. He would serve his own family. He would tie his own camel. He would feed his animals, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He would eat with servants. He would knead the dough with them. He would carry his own groceries, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Kana fi khidmati ahlihi, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He was in the service of his family. And she says he also used to joke a lot at home. So, so many of the jokes that we have from the Prophet وسلم, are between her and the Prophet And he had this amazing attention to detail with his family and with whatever guests were in his home. So the Prophet وسلم, would ask me, you know, what part of the glass I drank from and he would drink from it Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Aisha radiallahu anha, she would, she would laugh and she would smile when she would talk about the Prophet وسلم, kissing her because of how emotional it would make her and how much joy that used to bring her. And if you were a guest in his home, the Prophet Sallallahu would personally serve you. So when he came home, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's not like he just, you know, figuratively, you know, just knocked out on the couch Alayhi Salatu Wasallam and had nothing to give his family. He gave everything to his family Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that was something special about him. And the other implication of that was the Prophet Sallallahu consistency. So when she's asked, how was he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at home? She says, Kana khuluquhu al-Qur'an. That's the greatest praise she could have given him, that his character was the Qur'an. Everything he taught you, he was Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in one narration, she even said, Iqra'u in shi'tum qad aflah al-mu'minun alladheena hum fi salatihim khashi'oon. If you want, you can read Surah Al-Mu'minun, the first 10 ayat, Hakada kana khuluquhu Rasulillahi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's what the character of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was like. And when she's asked about his worship, that's when Aisha radiallahu anha just continues to say, look, as beautiful as his worship was on the outside, you have no idea what his worship was like on the inside. She was asked about what his qiyam was like, and particularly in Ramadan. And she said that Rasulullah sallallahu used to pray 11 rak'ahs in Ramadan or in other months. And he used to offer four and then four, and then he would offer three, and then he would offer his witr sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she said, don't ask me about their beauty and their length because they were unmatched Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was praised in his Qiyam from her. And Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha says that, I asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, do you sleep before offering the Witr prayer? And Aisha radiallahu anha says that he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, my eyes sleep wala yanamu qalbi, and my heart remains awake. My heart does not sleep, SubhanAllah. So just like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in public, when he would hear the call of prayer, you could see it, arihna biha ya Bilal. Comfort us with it, O Bilal. And he would rush to the prayer at home, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His relationship with his Lord was the thing that his family noted the most. And there is this narration that stuns me. And it's, it's really powerful. And I want you to imagine, again, you're sitting with Aisha radiallahu anha and you've just collected all of these narrations from her about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you ask her after all of this, 
Give us a'jaba shay'in ra'aytihi min Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Aisha, O oh our mother, what was the most amazing thing you ever saw from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? You know, all of this that you've given us, if you could note the most amazing thing, an incident, a moment that you shared with him, that you could give it to us. And sakatat fabakat. She got quiet and she started to cry. And after she cries for a long time, she says about the Prophet وسلم, everything about him was amazing ajab. There was nothing about his affairs وسلم, about the way he carried himself, about his being, his presence that wasn't amazing. But she said that the most amazing thing, she said there was this one night. There was this one particular night where the Prophet وسلم, came to bed and his skin was to my skin and we were close. And he says to me, Ya Aisha, would you allow me to go and worship my Lord tonight? SubhanAllah, like, are you okay if I leave the bed right now and I start worship? And it was in the very beginning of the night and the Prophet وسلم, habitually would take some time to sleep and then he would wake up and pray. But here he came and he cuddled with his wife and he says to her, Ya Aisha, can I go and worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? Are you okay with that? And she said, Wallahi inni la uhibbu qurbak. I love being close to you. Wa uhibbu ma sarrak. But as much as I love being close to you, Ya Rasulullah, I love what makes you happy. So if you want to get up and pray tonight and you want to start early doing that, then go ahead. So Aisha radiallahu anha is in bed. She's watching the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. She says he got up and he made wudu and he said Allahu Akbar and he started to pray. And she said he started to weep Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so much that his beard became soaked. Now it was normal for her to witness the Prophet Sallallahu in long nights of Qiyam and the Prophet Sallallahu weeping at night, but she's looking at him praying and he's weeping so much that his beard was soaked. And Aisha radiallahu anha, their room was so small that when the Prophet Sallallahu used to make sujood in his Qiyam, when he used to prostrate, he would tap her on the leg and she would move up her legs so that the Prophet Sallallahu could pray. And so she says that this was just unusual because then he kept on crying until he wet the area of his prayer. I mean, can you imagine how many tears came down from the eyes of Rasulullah that his beard was wet, that the ground where her legs would be, his room became wet. He literally caused a puddle from his tears. So at that point, you're worried about him, right? I mean, this is unusual how much crying is taking place. And you would think that something bad happened or you would think he's afraid Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Aisha radiallahu anha, as a good wife, as someone who loves him, she says, I wanted to comfort him. So I said, Ya Rasulullah, why are you crying so much? Why are you crying so much? Why Ya Rasulullah, why do you have to cry so much? وَقَدْ غَفَرَ اللَّهُ لَكَ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِكَ وَمَا تَأَخَّرَ And Allah has forgiven you for everything that you have done in the past and everything that you will do. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam responds and he says, Ya Aisha, أَفَلَا أَكُونُ عَبْدًا شكورا. O oh, Aisha, should I not be a grateful servant? And then he says, Verily, there was this ayah that was revealed to me last night. Woe to the one who reads it and does not go into contemplation. Indeed, in the creation of the heavens and the earth, the alteration of night and day, and the ships that sail the sea. And the rain that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down from the heavens, reviving the earth after its death, and the way that Allah scatters his creatures throughout the earth. And the shifting of the winds and the way that the clouds differ between the heavens and the earth. In all of this is a sign for people of understanding. So Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha is witnessing an ayah, a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in front of her. And the sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in front of her, which is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is crying because of these signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah has still left for us should we be people of understanding. صلوا عليه صلوا عليه 
صلى الله عليه وسلم